What's good YouTube? It's your boy D. Welcome back to the Strength Finders Lifestyle Channel and um, I'm actually going to try to speed this video up as much as I possibly can because um, I'm actually going to meet with my wife when she's on her way home and we're going to actually go train. So I, wanna, I wanted to put this video together earlier today but I was busy so I'm going to try to see if I can squeeze in this video. I'm not going to rush you too much because I do want to get some detail. I want to get to some specifics so hopefully everything works out perfect. Before we get on with the video do your boy a huge favorite like comment share the video subscribe if you are new to watching me if you're new to my channel if you're new to the strength finders lifestyle channel um go ahead and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you can be notified when we post these videos and that goes to even my subscribers already if you haven't already make sure you click that notification just in case if you haven't already but anyway guys um i wanted to touch on something that i have never touched on like i've never talked about it outside of my family like unless you were close to me i never told anybody why i stopped doing music um i just me personally i felt the need to not have to tell anybody but at the same time i did have a lot of supporters guys um if you look back to and you know in my previous videos you'll see that i was heavy in the music for quite some time i was doing music for quite some time um actually i grew to the point where i started my own label i started my own record label iron shop entertainment and i kind of talked about it a little Little bit in um, a couple of videos I'll post the link below I'll attach it somehow to this video me kind of going in brief as to uh, some of my experiences so I want to um, kind of like how can I put it give you guys a lot of substance without like really making this a video where I sit in because trust me it could get lengthy I can sit here and tell you guys it we could be sitting here for days if I talk to you guys all day about my entire experience and perhaps one day I'll do it but today I just particularly wanted to address um, and talk about why I'm not doing music anymore what made me sit it down especially as passionate as i was um regarding music all right so um with that said where do i begin um i'll begin with the obvious like people always want to know like what got you into music like why did you decide to i used to rap too by the way just in case you guys don't know um what it was that i did and i did it with passion too guys um so uh what got me into rapping um I would say unlike a lot of my peers in terms of like other rap influencers or you know whatever lifestyle they were um, living in um there's a lot of people who i would say have similarities as to what has influenced them to get into rap and um with that said um i personally have never heard anyone say the reason why they got into rap was for anything close to mine and i'm not like comparing me to say i'm better than anyone no i'm just pretty much saying i've never heard anybody say that they got into rap for the same reasons that i got in i've never heard that meaning you have some people that uh getting they got into rap because of their favorite rapper their favorite mc which has influenced them or because of well, now don't get me wrong um as i got into rap there were certain artists that I've gravitated towards but that wasn't the initial thing that got me into rap so with that said how do I do this guys uh, this is a bit of a sensitive type of um, conversation it's a bit of a sensitive subject for me because I you know again um, the passion that I have for rap was not because of um, how can I put it how can I put it um, it wasn't because of any type of tangible thing um, I got into rap to be positive guys I got into rap with the mentality of even though I listened to a lot of rap where there were a lot of uh, rappers who were you know and I listened to street rap when I was coming up I listened to you know um, underground hip-hop I listened to a lot of the artists um, who you can hear on the mainstream I listened to all kind of music but I personally gravitated towards the underground hip-hop um, style and it probably you know was because of the way that I grew up you know what I mean me growing up in the streets I gravitated towards the streets I was you know and associated in a street type lifestyle um and i you don't even really hear me talk about it because it's not something that i'm proud of don't get me wrong i'm proud of who i am i'm proud of my many experiences in terms of what has groomed me and grew me up but in terms of just like you know preaching that you know that's just not me because i like to keep it positive you know what i mean and one day i'll talk about um you know those experiences as well but anyway to keep on track um as far as me and how i got into rap um so many different directions I want to go with this but I'll start with um, for me uh, once upon a time you know okay I have two sisters and we are all three years apart I have an older sister and I have a younger sister 
and we are all coincidentally three years apart. So I, I did not have a brother. And of course, as the guy, as the mid said, it was difficult for me to relate with my older sister, meaning like when I was in the uh, eighth or ninth grade, she was already three years ahead of me. So she was already doing what teenagers do at an advanced level as I was entering my way into high school. And of course, my younger sister, three years behind me, as I'm in the eighth or the ninth grade, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, doing what eight, eighth and ninth graders do and of course you know that was my little sister however I was closer with my little sister because I kind of felt like I was more um, connected to her I was more in tune with her in terms of looking back and being able to you know provide some type of guidance and plus you know that was that was baby sister you know what I'm saying uh, nothing to take away from uh, big sister but you know big sister now nah, we didn't necessarily we've had our uh, We've had our uh, ups and downs, we've had our roller coasters, but this is not that type of video. So with that said, the whole purpose of me saying that is like, um, growing up there was some dysfunction in my house, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna get into the specifics, but there was dysfunction in my house. Um, there was a lot of dysfunction, crazy dysfunction. And um, for me, I needed an outlet, guys. Um, I could not, you know, like I said, I couldn't really talk to my older sister because we were somewhat disconnected. And my younger sister, we couldn't relate to some degree because she wasn't mature enough. So I needed an outlet. I needed someone to talk to. I needed to be able to get out everything that was inside. And um, I had, you know, at that time, I really, you know, I always live my life picking and choosing my friends. So I always was pretty much a lone wolf. I walked alone and I kept my friends um, to a rare. And I didn't really have a lot of friends. I traveled like so um, for me, I needed an outlet, you know, and one day I had a breakdown, guys. One day it was a situation that was going down in the crib and um, I reached my boiling point and I just pretty much had a breakdown and I just needed to get off my chest what it was. So um, the first thing that came to my mind, guys, and you guys are getting an exclusive. Like I've never told anybody this outside of literally um, my wife. My wife is the only person who I've told this to years ago. So you guys are getting an exclusive. So anyway, guys, um, the first thing that came to my mind was to you know grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down my thoughts. And um, that's exactly what happened. I took a pen. I took a pen and a paper, and I just let it all out on paper, guys. I released everything on paper. I just went 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 and just was just scribbling away guys almost like you know some people their outlet uh, is they take it out in the gym they, you know boxers they go to the um, gym and they you know hit on a heavy bag and they release and I didn't have any of those things available at the time so for me writing was my way of hitting on a heavy bag so to speak so I just wrote and wrote and wrote and scripted to the point where um, I started bawling in tears, guys. I started bawling in tears, and um, to the point where my paper was covered in tears, and there was such a relief, guys. There was such a relief after that. It was like a huge burden was like a huge weight was off my shoulders, and I just was able to breathe. I remember taking a deep breath. <sighs> And it felt so good to be able to get it out. And it felt like I was talking to a friend. It felt like I was talking to my best friend, as crazy as it sounds, just through a pen and a piece of paper, guys. It felt like I really was just talking to a friend and they was able to listen, you know what I'm saying? Of course, the pen and paper can't talk back, but I found an outlet. I found an opportunity to be able to get off my chest what it was that I was feeling, guys. All of my emotions, all of my pain, all of my hurts, I poured onto paper, guys guys so um with that said you know that was a new discovery for me i never felt the feeling of being able to get that type of relief so that was something that i decided that whenever i go through stuff you know most a lot of people pick up the phone and call a friend um they have someone to talk to i had no one to talk to um but so for me that was what it was for me guys um i pretty much you know let it all out so anytime that i was going through anything guys um that's exactly how i handled it and each time it felt good it felt like i was actually healing because i felt like i was able to have someone to talk to right so um of course you know as a teenager there's a lot of things happening simultaneously you know you, you you're going through those type of obstacles where if you are um in a home where there's dysfunction you have to keep in mind that while that's happening you're in school you're having to deal with um peers you're having to deal with peer pressure you're having to deal with you know your emotions suppressing your emotions and you know if there are people out here bullying you know 
guys, kids, if you're watching, and I know it's difficult to connect with the kid to get them to understand um, why it's important to make sure that you don't take your frustrations out on your peers, and that's where bullying occurs, but I highly advise you, if you're watching and you are being bullied at home, um, please do not bully your peers at school. Trust me, um, it is not going to lead you on a positive path. Trust me, you will find yourself in deep troubles if you decide to let that be your outlet, taking it out on other people. I'm looking out the window to see if that's my way. But um, anyway, I'm writing and I'm writing and I'm writing. And um, one day I was listening to the radio and I would say the first artist that I can say that um, grabbed my ear was Pac, was Tupac. Tupac Shakur was the first artist that I would say um, that grabbed my ear. Um, and I would say was the first influence when it came to rap. And the reason, and um, Tupac, it was, uh, a, it was, it was a particular song that came on the radio and um, it was where he was talking about his obstacles, his trials, his tribulations, his upbringing, his, um, you know, things that was happening in the streets, things that was happening in his home. And the way that he was pouring out was with so much passion and conviction to where it instantly, like I instantly was able to relate to what he was saying. And it, gra it grabbed me guys. Like, I, you know, when I heard the music, I heard the words, it felt like he was like speaking on my life. It, was, it felt like it was me, you know what I mean? It felt like everything that he was saying was a representation, a reflection of the experiences that I was going through. So I wanted to hear more. So I was listening to more. I wanted to hear more of the music. You know, anytime you hear anything good, you want to, you know, you want more of it. You know what I mean? If there's any, if you taste any good food, you want more of it. But so anyway, I was listening to his music. So I started to listen to more of his music. And of course, you know, I started to discover, you know, um, I would say some sides to his music that I didn't necessarily agree with. Um, there were some aspects of it that I didn't agree with, but it didn't stop me from listening to him because for me, um, when I listen to underground hip hop or any artist where I don't necessarily agree with all of the lyrics, if you're great at what you do, if you're skilled, I try to sift like looking for the diamond in the rough. So I find the good and even the stuff that I may not necessarily be the biggest fan of. So um, with that said, at the end of the day, those experiences were still similar experiences that I've experienced in my life. So what happened was um, I was, you know, I was like, well, shoot, man, I'm, I'm writing. So as I'm writing, I was thinking, why not try to write in a way where I can add structure to my writings? So even when I decided that I wanted to write and you know adding almost like poetry um for me i saw it more as poetry than even wanting to do rap so even at that point i didn't necessarily consider myself wanting to be a rapper i was intrigued by it and um it you know it lit me up guys i you know when i would when i would do it i would you know try to improve just like anything that you know you go after you want to try to get better at it so this was before i even really knew where i wanted to go with it i just wanted to get better at it I f it felt like i found a hobby i found something to do to keep my mind off the chaos that was happening in my home so I did that for a while and then I decided I said you know what man you know I like what they do behind beats so it was one song that stood out that inspired me this is the song that inspired me to want to start writing music and it was by Tupac and Scarface the song was titled Smile and this song guys just oh my gosh I was so inspired to write when I heard that song that was the song the song that started my whole rap career in terms of putting anything on wax was by uh, a pop and Scarface. Still my favorite song to this day, Smile. And mind you, I didn't have a studio, I didn't have no, nothing to write over, so what I did was I had a um, cassette player and I would just pretty much write over the beat, so I would rewind it and write over the beat, rewind it and write over the beat. Instantly, I knew that I was on to something. Instantly, I decided that this was something that I wanted to pursue, all right? So um, fast forward, because I know this video is a little lengthy. I decided to go ahead and pursue music. I started to, you know, connect. And at this point in my life, I started going to church and, you know, I wanted to do things the right way, the positive way, even when I got into music, even listening to certain influences to where the music didn't necessarily come out like mine. In a minute, let me, let me explain to you guys what I mean by that. All right. So one thing that I can, when I came into it, I came in with a vision. All right. So when I decided to do rap, I came in with a vision. All right. And this is where a lot of people um, may not know, but um, I would say in my genre um, at the time, of the rappers that I was listening to um, in terms of, I would say, uh, how can I put it? So at the time, I would say that uh, the music that I was listening to, you know, I wanted to take a different approach, guys. I wanted to um, 
of course, you know, growing up, I could relate with a lot of what these guys were saying, but it was one thing that stood out to me that ensured me that I would take a different route. It was one thing that stood out to me that I noticed um, when it came to a lot of the artists that I was listening to. At the time, a lot of people, you know, they talked about, well, this is the struggle. This is what I, you know, this is what I've experienced. These are my experiences, and this is what I've gone through. This is what I go through. I do this. I deal that. I do this. I bust that. I shoot this. You know, and even with that, again, that's part of it that I. Don't don't agree with but what I would notice is you know even in interviews when I would listen to rappers in interviews and you know they would get asked the question well why do you represent this that and the third and a lot of the times their answers are well this is the lifestyle that I live this is the lifestyle that I know this is all that I know so for me when I saw that I would notice a pattern in the sense of everybody pretty much rapped about their problems but not too many people you know, rapped about solutions not too many people spoke on solution and to me i kind of saw it as i don't know if it's a thing where people didn't want to people was embracing the lifestyle i'm sure that was the case too but not too many people rap about the solution along with the problem so for me you know i never wanted to stay in uh i would say hardship so to speak i always wanted to you know regardless of what we was going through at home i wanted things to work i wanted things to you know be fixed so for me my heart was in the place of saying I can relate so what I wanted to do was allow my music to be relatable these were my experiences I was coming from a place of pain I was writing from a place of pain so I can you know speak on my experiences but it will always pull to even if I didn't experience um, the positive gestures that I put out there even if I didn't walk into that yet I still was inviting it I still wanted to say hey at the end of the day regardless of what we go through we're all here to at least um, climb higher levels in life we're all here to evolve we're all here to grow we will be at peace someday we will be able to start uh, eliminating pain from our life as much as we possibly can in a nutshell guys I basically wanted to um, script my music my vision my message was to pretty much uh, cease the hardship guys um cease the hardship um recognize it identify it but now how can we move on where's the solution so my music was pretty much to build a bridge where the gap was this is what's going on this is what i'm dealing with i wanted to build a bridge okay i can relate with you i've done that as well but at the same time let's seek solution and so for me that was what i wanted to do a lot of the people you know when i went out and performed uh would say you know your music sounds so familiar but at the same time even though it sounds familiar your words are different you don't curse and i made it a conscious decision to not do so i made it a conscious decision to be unique so um quickly my music gravitated towards the people and um i started to get invited to places to rap and things of that nature and um, I started to connect with people and um, I was blessed to have opportunities to connect with a lot of people um, doing what I was doing and um, a lot of people you know pretty much gravitated towards my sound my music and um, I was having some success with it and then along came the business uh, side of it guys which uh, made it interesting and I started to learn that music is much more than just music <laughs> music is much more than just music so if you're an up-and-coming artist um, understand that um, as much as you're passionate about your music like don't let anything stop you from pursuing your passion but you must know that it's a business first when it comes to entering the business of music it's business first you got to protect your business you are an investment and you know there's a lot of people especially if you're talented who want to um, I would say rip your event <laughs> rip your investments apart and make your investment their investment so not saying everybody's like that i'm just saying that there's a lot of people out here who will take advantage of you if you don't and i'm not saying that there were people who did that to me i'm not saying that that's what happened for sure um i've had my share of experiences which i'm not gonna you know i'm not looking to you know make this type of video where i'm gonna call out people and anything like that now nah, we bigger than that um i'll just say i've had my share of experiences that opened my eyes um when it came to music and that was part of the reason why i decided that i didn't want to do it but that wasn't the main reason guys the main reason guys we are getting to the juicy part the main reason why i stopped doing music was because um and it's crazy because a lot of people speculate you know what i'm saying like when people want you I'm like i get it people wanted me to continue to do it you know i was doing stuff operating as a team with people and things of that nature so when they saw me digressing 
from music, you know, a lot of people were like, was like, well, he want to be alone, he want to be solo, or he don't want to rock with me no more, this, that, and the third, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I actually had a deal almost put, um, I had a deal that I turned away from, guys. It was a deal with a major label, and this was actually at the same time. I literally was at the point of a pen in my hand, and I was uh, at the point where I could, was going to sign to a major label, but I knew sorry about that guys uh, the windows right here but i knew i knew in my heart that i didn't want to do it anymore it's almost like a relationship you know if you know that you are you know getting ready to walk down the aisle and you know in your heart that you no longer want to be in the relationship if you know that you want to part ways you do not see yourself um with that person in the long run then why would you sign on a dotted line and sign your life away and be in a relationship that you know that you don't want to be in anymore so that's that's what it was guys a lot of people thought I was crazy for, you know, turning down the deal and, you know, they, why are you doing this? Why would you turn down the deals? You know, you work so hard throughout your whole career to get to this point. And um, I turned it down because I knew that I no longer wanted to do music. I was um, wanting to pursue different things at that time, too. But uh, for the most part, the reason why I decided to not do music anymore, guys, was because listen to me clear all right so the reason why i told you guys in the beginning um i explained to you guys where the passion came from again i didn't get into the music for the purpose of really doing music even though that was a discovery of passion and i really really discovered that passion and i really really wanted to do music i saw myself up there among the elite but the reason why i didn't do it was because i, I grew to a place guys where i no longer was operating from a place of pain guys i evolved i grew i was happy i grew to a place of happiness where i did not need to depend on my happiness to come from my dysfunctional family or you know things that was happening i pretty much found who i was um i pulled myself away from the crowd and I pretty much was on a mission to find me, on a mission to discover who I really am, on a mission to find out what my purpose in life was. So it was me and God for a good season, guys, to where now that's like literally the way that I move, guys. So I grew to a place where I found happiness. I was happy. So I could not write. I could not write music, guys, because I was writing from a place of pain. I was writing from a place of pain. Again, my experiences would lead to me wanting to find solution. And I wrote a ton of music where we talked about that. I wrote a ton. Guys, I have literally, I would say maybe over 20 mixtapes, guys, 20 mixtapes. And the music wasn't the same. I mean, I would like to say that I was creative. So I came from so many different and my mixtapes was comprised of like 20 plus songs guys so you do the math i did a lot of music and i was on the verge of my first album and i decided not to do it um i was working with a lot of other artists and you know i had fun doing it but at the same time i stopped doing music because i no longer was coming from a place of pain guys i started to develop new interests there was uh new things that you know would wake me up things that i wanted to gravitate towards things that i wanted to get into and uh and that's exactly what i did and i you know asked no one for permission to do that you know what i'm saying and believe it or not once upon a time when i didn't know who i was you know i'm like well what should i do with my life you know who should i become should i go to school to be a doctor should i do this that and the third in all reality i needed to go to god i realized that i needed to go to god and i needed to gain confidence from him and get guidance from him and that's exactly what happened and I grew to a place of happiness to where I didn't want to write about those things anymore I wanted to script to a new story I wanted to beat to a new drum I wanted to write to uh, the next chapter of my life and I made the decision to walk away from the opportunity and I appreciate everybody who I've done music with in the past I appreciate everybody who has uh, shared platforms with me um, in music I appreciate all you guys who have joined forces with me who I've done music with who I've collabed with um, all you guys man I appreciate y'all because y'all have helped me do what I not only do what I wanted to do you guys helped me um, get more creative uh, in the craft of doing music I'm gonna put a pause on something too because you know, I, one thing that I heard and it stood out to me because, you know, for me, um, I read comments and things of that nature. But one thing, a couple things, I'm just going to briefly touch on it. You know, people saw the gift. People, you know, you know, felt like this is what I was put here to do. They saw the gift. They was like, man, D, you tripping, man. There's nothing else you're going to do. People spoke bad on me like you are so gifted at music to where you will never succeed at, you know, at anything else or the stuff that we see you venturing into because it's not your calling who are you to speak on anybody's life again i have a relationship with god 
I got confirmation and affirmation from God. Just because you see the fruit doesn't mean that you see the tree. Just because you don't see me doing music anymore doesn't mean that my gift is no longer in use. I am highly connected with my source and I know exactly how my gift is being used. And just because you saw my gift flourish in music doesn't mean that my gift will not flourish doing other things that I'm pursuing. So um, guys, y'all need to stop judging people out there. You never know how God is using you. For instance, if you see a person build a house, right? If you see them build a house and they got finished building that house and they walked away from that home, are you going to judge them and say, are you tripping? You just built that home. They have the ability to build another home, guys. So at the end of the day, I know the gift that God has given me. I know how to sculpt. I know how to use the gift and the art and the creativity and the skills that I picked up along the way and how we're going to apply them to what it is that we're doing now. So I'm excited about what God is doing in my life. I'm excited about where we're going and how we're growing in our life. And um, I have a huge, huge vision that, you know, you guys will start to learn and see us put this thing together here on the channel. But there's so much more to meet the eye. So that's what it is guys. Sorry I had to make the video a bit long, but um, just wanted to take time out to make sure that um, I gave you guys what it was that I needed to tell you in terms of why um, I don't do music anymore guys. I do not write from a place of pain. I do not operate from a place of pain. I have evolved guys. I'm on something different these days guys and I'm happy with uh, where God has taken me. So um, this will conclude the video and I will do a shout out. Like I said at the end of every video we're doing shout outs. So today's uh, Strength Squad shout out goes to brrr, drum roll please so today's strength squad shout out goes to my homie my good friend always supportive um always positive ravens corner ravens corner i will post um all her information her ig and her uh, youtube link will be in the description below and uh shout out to ravens corner um very very positive person positive influence in my life and play a major role with what it is that we do here at the strength finders lifestyle channel so um as always if you want to shout out guys comment strength squad 100 emoji down in the comment section and i got you so as always guys do what brings life to you and it's a great chance that you'll bring life to whatever it is that you do. You already know. Till the next time, it's your boy D. Hashtag grow.